Now we're going to look at how to use surveys in REDCap. To enable surveys in your project, simply click Enable next to Use Surveys in this Project under Main Project Settings on the Project Setup page. Now, when I go into the Online Designer, I have the option to enable each of my instruments as a survey. When I enable them, it will take me immediately to the survey settings to set up the survey. First, I have the option to retitle the survey. I would use this option if I want the name displayed to my participants to be something different than what I have displayed as my form title. Next, I can provide instructions on how to complete the survey. I can use piping or basic HTML formatting here to customize it. After that, I have the option to choose a logo that can display at the top of my survey. I choose the file and upload it. Next, I can do some customization on my survey. For example, I can change the size of the survey text, the font the survey's in, or the coloring in the survey theme. REDCap offers a few different default schemes. or you can customize it to fit your own preferences or branding. Next we'll look at survey customizations. You can choose to have the questions auto-numbered or you can choose to use custom numbering. If you're using branching logic, you must use custom numbering. You can also change the question display format. You can choose to have the questions all on one page or you can choose to have one section per page. This means that any time there is a yellow section header, it will start a new page in your survey. Participants will click Next Page or Previous Page to navigate through your survey. This is useful because every time your participants click to move to another page, their information is sent to the server and saved. So if they drop out partway through your survey, you'll still get some information. With this option, you can also choose to display the page numbers at the top of the survey page and to hide the Previous Page button on the survey page. You can choose if the red Must Provide Value text appears next to Required Fields, and you can choose if you want survey respondents to view aggregate survey results after they complete the survey. Finally, REDCap has a text-to-speech functionality. If you want to, you can enable it and have it initially on but be able to turn it off by the participant, or have it initially off but enable it to be turned on by the participant. This is extremely useful if you might be working with a visually impaired community. Next, you'll set your survey access. You can choose an expiration date at which point the survey becomes inactive, and you can choose to allow your participants to save and return later. With that, you can also choose if you want them to be able to return and modify completed responses, or if you just want them to be able to pick up from where they left off. At the end of the survey, you have three choices on how you want to continue. The first option is to auto-continue to the next survey. This will immediately start the next survey instrument after they complete this survey. Otherwise, you can have the survey completion text where just a nice message pops up thanking them for taking your survey. Again, you can customize this using piping and HTML. Or you can have it redirect to a new URL. This URL might be something like your project homepage so that they can get more information. Another common use case for this is if you have a survey that must be anonymous, but which you're offering some kind of incentive for people to complete. One of the easiest ways to do this is to set up two separate projects. The first one is your main survey. The second one is also a survey where you're just collecting their identifying information so you can send them their incentive. Your main survey will be completely anonymous. At the end of it, you can have the redirect to a URL that is the public survey link to your other survey. They will navigate to that survey and provide their contact information for you. There will be no way to link the records between the two projects, so you maintain your anonymity while still being able to collect the information you need to provide incentives for completing your survey. Finally, you have the option to send a confirmation email to let the respondent know they have completed their survey. Again, you can choose who this is coming from, provide the subject and body, you can use piping and HTML formatting, and even choose to put upload an attachment.
When you're done, you just click Save Changes. Now that I've enabled both surveys, you can see the check mark saying they've been enabled, and I can go back to these survey settings to change this information at any time. Next, you'll want to manage your survey participants. There are two ways you can send your survey out to your participants, via the public survey link or via the participant list. The public survey link is a single URL that you will send to all participants. Everyone receives the same link and takes your survey through it. This allows for the possibility of participants taking the survey multiple times, which may be helpful or not depending on your survey. This survey method is considered completely anonymous unless you ask for identifying information. You also have a few different ways you can have the participant take the public survey. If, for example, this is a clinical situation and they are in the office with you, you can open it for them. You can see that the layout here is pretty much the same as you'd get in a regular data entry. However, there is no way for whomever is filling out this survey to access the rest of your project. This is extremely important. If you just open up a regular data entry form for a participant to fill in their information, they could navigate to other parts of your project and, depending on your permissions, change something in your setup or access other participants' information. You can see here that I can enable the speech option, and if the participant or the participant's auto reader selects the microphone, it will read out the information. There are other ways to distribute the public survey link. You can just email the link to all of your participants. You can send them a simpler link, just the red cap uc.denver.edu slash surveys, and then give them an access code. Or you can have a QR code. This is a great way to do it if you have posters advertising your project around campus. People can just scan the QR code, go straight to your survey, and take it on their smartphones then and there. You can also print all of this for the respondent. Your other option on how to distribute surveys is via the participant list. With the participant list, you will need to have your participants' email addresses. Then, you can go to Add Participants and add your participants one per line. Now I go to Compose Survey Invitations, and I can choose when this should go to them, if they should get any reminders, These reminders will only be sent if they do not respond by a specified time. Then you can choose who the message is coming from. You can have up to three email addresses associated with your REDCap account. So if you have a project-specific email, you might want the survey to come from that instead. Enter in your subject and compose your invitation. You can use HTML formatting and piping here. And then select which participants you want from the participant list. REDCap offers several options to select and unselect in groups, or you can do it individually. What this will do is send a unique link to each of your participants. This way you'll be able to link one participant's responses throughout your project. Having the unique link means REDCap knows who each response is coming from. It is important to note that, initially, this is also an anonymous option. Although I know who has responded, I won't know which response is theirs. This can be changed, however, if I choose to enable the participant identifier. Now I include a unique identifier with my participants and I'll be able to link directly to their responses. If I'm working directly with the participant, I can also open up their link for them. Now when I reload, I can see that this participant has completed the survey and I can jump to their response. I can also see if I have invitations scheduled to go out, if invitations have been sent, 
and I can get a survey access code or QR code just like I could with the public survey invitation. You can also choose to export your entire participant list. The survey invitation log will provide a list of all invitations that you have sent out in the past and all invitations that are going to go out in the future. This is an easy way for you to review what the activity has been in sending out survey invitations. Back on the project setup page, there's an extra option that now becomes available to us under the Enable Optional Modules and Customizations. This option allows us to designate an email field to use for survey participants. This means if we have an email field early on in the project, we can capture that email and use it to send surveys to later on using the survey participant list. Please be aware that designating an email field means that the survey responses will no longer be considered anonymous. I click on the drop-down and I can see a list of all the fields that I have validated as email addresses. I select the one I want and click Save. Now when I go to the participant list, I see the emails from the different entries. And they'll show up for each of my surveys. Back in the online designer, you have a couple of other ways to send out surveys. The first option we'll cover is the survey queue. The survey queue functions like a to-do list of surveys for your participant. You can choose which surveys you want to have active in the queue. You can also choose to have these surveys auto-start. This means they will launch as soon as the survey queue logic is met. And that is a big difference between using the survey queue and just having surveys auto-launch or sending them out. You can have specific logic apply. For example, I only want my Nacho Craving Index survey to go out after the survey quick check has been completed. I can also choose to have some surveys sent out only to people who meet specific criteria. For example, I may want the survey to only go out to people over the age of 30 or, or people with diabetes. I can specify that logic in the second box. When I'm done, I just click Save. The other option is to use automated invitations. Automated invitations look and function a lot like the regular survey invitation. There are two primary differences. The first is, like with the survey queue, you can set specific logic so that the automated invitation only goes out when certain criteria are met. The second difference is that you can be a little more specific about when to send the invitations after the conditions are met. You can send immediately, on the next day, weekday, weekend, or a specific day of the week, and at a specific time. After a certain amount of time has passed, for example, you may want to send out a follow-up survey three weeks after they complete the initial survey. Or you can have it send at an exact date and time. Like with the regular survey invitations, you can enable reminders if they have not completed the survey by a specified time. Your last step with this is to activate it. You can deactivate the automated survey invitations at any time. That covers how to use surveys in REDCap. Next, we'll get longitudinal projects.